Hi, I'm Urvashi. My blog is twosleevers.com and I am going to show you how to use your Instant Pot to do pot and pot cooking, which is going to open up a whole new, huge, big, magic, delicious world for you. So I did a video on this two years ago. The lighting was absolutely crap and I talked for too long. So we're going to do this again and uh, I'm going to explain how this works. Okay, you should trust me because I actually know what I'm doing for Instant Pot cooking. I have three Instant Pot cookbooks, Instant Pot Fast and Easy, Keto Instant Pot, Indian Instant Pot, all authorized by Instant Pot, and uh, actually all bestsellers. Here's how pot and pot cooking works. So a pressure cooker, as you know, typically what you would do is you would uh, put your food in here and you would cook it. And you would cook one dish at a time. So you might make a stew, you might make um, some kind of a butter chicken maybe. However, there is a way to be able to cook more than one dish at the same time in the pressure cooker, and that's what's called pot and pot cooking. Why would you bother? So let me give you the basics of how you do this. The basics of how you do this is you take this pot, you put a couple of cups or maybe a cup and a half of water in the, set, in the center here because that water as it heats is gonna create steam. That steam is gonna create pressure. That pressure is what's going to reduce the boiling point of water and that's how you cook, your food is gonna cook faster. Now in pot and pot cooking, what you would do is you would put either water or food at the bottom. You would then get a trivet or a steamer rack and put that on here. And then you would put food in another pot in here. Many times this food in the smaller pot will also have water. So let me give you an example of when you would and would not use water in this pot. If you are making something that absorbs water, such as anything starchy, potatoes, pasta, rice, beans, at the, at the very least, those things absorb water. So you want, for example, you couldn't just put rice in here without putting water in here. You would want it to be able to steam. Um, on the other hand, if you're making something really fast like fish or vegetables, those things would be able to be cooked with just steaming. So think of this, forget about the pressure cooker for a minute. Just think about the stuff that you can steam and the stuff that you can't steam. What's happening in here is essentially it's either steaming or it's cooking. So if it's an item that on the stove top you wouldn't put water to steam, you do not have to put water in here to steam it. If it's an item that on the stove top you, put, you would put water to cook it, you probably need the water in here. That's a good way to remember. There are four reasons, at least, that I know of why you would do this. One is because, as I mentioned earlier, you can cook multiple things at the same time. You can make butter chicken at the bottom, you can make cur uh, rice on top. You can make uh, beans at the bottom, and then you could make uh, potentially brown rice on the top. So there's a variety of things that you can mix and match, and that allows you to cook two things at the same time. The second reason that you would want to do that is to slow down cooking. Now I know you bought the instant pot or a pressure cooker because you wanted to speed up cooking. Why would you want to slow it down? The only reason you would want to slow it down is because you were trying to cook two different items together. I'm going to explain that. The third reason for using pot and pot cooking is because it if effectively works like a de facto water bath. If you've ever cooked something in the oven in a water bath like a cheesecake or a custard, uh, we can talk more about that in half a minute. And then the other reason that you might want to do that is because you might be cooking or quote baking something uh, that doesn't have a lot of water in it and you want to steam uh, a custard or you want to steam a cake. What kind of things can you cook at the same time? Well, typically you can cook things at the same time that have roughly the same amount of cooking time. So for example, the butter chicken recipe that I have, it takes about 10 minutes to cook the chicken. Well, if you were cooking rice by itself in the pot, the rice would take four minutes to cook. Because you are elevating it, you're removing it from the direct source of heat at the bottom, it's gonna slow down the cooking, and that rice, which would ordinarily have taken four or five minutes, now can be left in there for 10 minutes. Same thing with dal. If you're making lentils, the lentils might take about five or six or seven or eight minutes. If you put rice on top, that can cook in about five minutes. Now instantly you realize that you cannot, for example, cook brown rice, which takes 22 minutes, and fish, which takes maybe two minutes. Those things can't go well together. So when you're trying to decide what can go together, look at the thing that takes the longest cooking time and look at the thing that takes the shortest cooking time and say, are they close enough? Okay, now four minutes to 10 minutes on rice, you know, it's not that big a deal. Two minutes to 22 minutes, it's a big deal. Some of this is gonna come with practice, some of this is gonna come from following a recipe. So let me give you some examples of what can be cooked together. I have a chicken biryani recipe where we're cooking, um, you know, uh, rice and chicken at the same time. The way I manage that is by cutting the chicken into small bites. So you could do the same thing here. Some things will naturally cook at the same time together. Like for example, um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, butter chicken and rice or um, fish and, and steamed vegetables, steamed broccoli. Those things will cook in approximately the same times. 
Other things you can force them to cook in approximately the same time by chopping up the longest cooking item into smaller bits. So for example, if you're wanting to steam a potato at the same, you're, you want to make mashed potatoes, you want to steam the potato at the same time um, as you boil eggs. Well, eggs, let's not get into how many different ways there are to make it, but let's say the eggs take five minutes, a potato, a whole potato might take 10 minutes. You might at that point chop up the potato into smaller bits. So you can make things kind of come close, but certain things you will never be able to cook like chickpeas that might take 20 minutes with fish that's gonna take two minutes. So find items that cook in about the same time and those can be cooked together. So you can cook white rice and lentils together. You can cook potato cubes and eggs together as an example. You can cook uh, white rice and uh, plain lentils together. You can cook brown rice and um, beans together, as long as the beans are soaked, etc., etc. So here are just some guidelines for what will go together. What won't go together is, for example, whole chicken and rice. Okay, one takes 20, 30 minutes, the other one takes two minutes. Not gonna happen. White rice and chickpeas, whole potatoes and broccoli, things that take a different amount of time are not gonna happen together. So again, try to find good recipes that'll show you how to do it. On my blog, twosleevers.com, try the butter chicken with rice. You can try the butter chicken with cauliflower rice. Uh, there's a pressure cooker rice and dal. There's a pressure cooker chana dal, dal and rice. You can try those things at the same time. When you're making any of the fish recipes, the steamed fish, the ginger, uh, Chinese ginger steamed scallion fish, you can make um, rice at the same time as long as you put the rice in the bottom and the fish on top. So here's an important principle. In order to cook things at the same time, they must have the same cook times. They must be cut up into pieces that will cook at the same time. And the thing that takes the longest to cook needs to go into the pot. The thing that takes a shorter time to cook needs to be elevated. You're moving it away from the direct source of heat at the bottom, elevating it, and that is what is going to retard the, the cooking time. Sometimes you're only making one thing. Like for example, I just want to steam broccoli, or I just want to steam a few asparagus tips, and I don't have time to babysit it. I'm running around, I'm trying to do six other things. Usually in my case, I'm on a conference call for work, um, you know, and I cook when I'm on conference calls, because come on, who doesn't do something else when they're on conference calls? I could play solitaire, or I could cook, I cook. Um, you're cooking something that's really, really delicate. You want to make a fish. You want to make, um, you know, steamed broccoli. You want to make something without a ton of water in it. In that situation, when you're trying to make a dry dish, I actually have a sesame ginger chicken recipe um, in the on the blog uh, where I use that technique, where I want the resultant product to be dry-ish, uh, but at the same time, I want to pressure cook it. So in that case, in the sesame ginger chicken salad, I wanted to pressure cook the chicken, but I needed to be able to shred that chicken and put it into a salad so I did not need a soup. Okay, in that case, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put not another dish at the bottom, no, not another piece of food at the bottom. I'm simply gonna put water, I'm gonna put this up here, and then I'm going to put, let's say something like this. By the way, I'm gonna do a separate video on the accessories that you need, but on the blog, there's a thing about uh, must have Instant Pot accessories, which are the ones that I use. So let's say I wanna steam broccoli, I'm gonna put a cup of water, uh, a cup, cup and a half in the bottom, I'm gonna put a rack on here, and I'm gonna put either this or a silicone basket on top, and I'm gonna put the broccoli in here and I'm gonna let it steam, okay? So when I'm cooking delicate items, when I'm trying to cook dry items, you want it elevated away from the heat, you don't want water in it, something's gonna cook really fast, you're gonna do it in a steamer basket and a steamer rack with water at the bottom. Really good way to do delicate vegetables, really good way to do seafood, typically. Um, anything that would cook really, really fast, is, you know, sometimes we use zero uh, minutes of pressure cooking time, that is a really, really good time for you to be elevating it and cooking it. The other thing that you, the, the other situation where you might uh, use an elevated thing is to boil eggs. So everybody has their own ways of doing it. You know, five, five, five method, two and twenty method, whatever you figure it out, what works well for you. Um, but in that situation, you would put water at the bottom. You would use a rack like this. You would probably stick eggs into this thing. This is actually an egg rack, um, and then you would make your eggs. So I've talked to you about how you can um, cut up an item and make the cooking slower. I'll give you two other tips how you can retard cooking times. One is to actually take whatever the food is and wrap it in foil. Foil doesn't conduct heat very well, it, it uh, protects that. So sometimes what I'll do, for example, is I will take and put rice at the bottom and uh, let's say that I wanna do um, broccoli on top. I'll take that broccoli and I'll wrap it in foil uh, and that it takes longer for that broccoli to get hotter and so you can retard cooking times by wrapping it in foil. Now for those of you who don't like foil, they make silicone envelopes. You might wanna put your broccoli in there, leave a little room for it to vent and you might try it in that way. The third way in which you can slow down cooking so that you can cook multiple items at the same time is to use frozen food. 
I do this a lot with vegetables. I don't defrost my vegetables. I just kind of, you know, take uh, frozen ones and put them right in there. And by the time it comes to temperature and it comes to pressure, etc., it's taken a lot longer for those vegetables to cook. So if you're cooking delicate vegetables and you're wanting to make rice at the same time, or you put beans at the bottom and you want to put, like let's say you want to do black eyed peas, which cook in 10 or 15 minutes, and you're trying to do uh, spinach or collard greens on top. Uh, I usually take frozen vegetables, frozen spinach, frozen collard greens. I create a little foil pouch and I put it on there and I put it on top. So you can retard cooking by elevating it. You can, you can slow down cooking times by cutting the item into smaller pieces. You can slow down cooking time by wrapping it in foil or in a silicone envelope. And you can, you can slow down cooking times by starting with frozen items. Let's talk about the thing that people love to use our instant pot for, which is cheesecakes. Cheesecakes are a glorious thing. I have a keto cheesecake recipe on the blog. I have a lemon ricotta cheesecake recipe on the blog. Those are fantastic. The reason that that works is that you're putting uh, water at the bottom, you're elevating this, and you're creating this full steam environment. And that steamed environment allows your food to cook with indirect heat and not direct heat. So if you're cooking a custard with really high heat, the custard is gonna curdle and it's gonna lump versus putting it in a water bath. So in an oven, the equivalent is gonna be, you take a pot, uh, sorry, you take a baking pan, you put water in it, and then you put your cheesecake on top. That's essentially what's happening here. Another situation where I use this uh, as a steam bath, if you will, is when I make a caramel custard. So if you look on the Two Sleevers blog, there's a recipe for caramel custard. By the way, I'm gonna put links to all of these recipes that I'm mentioning in the bottom. Um, but in that situation, what's happening is I'm putting water at the bottom, I'm putting a custard on top, I'm closing it. I'm not even actually um, sealing the pot at that point. I'm leaving it to venting. Essentially, all I'm doing is creating a moist, steamy, humid uh, environment in here, and that indirect heat is going to be able to cook my custards. So a really, really good situation uh, where you want to use that. So the fourth situation where you want to use pot and pot cooking is for, quote, baking. So I use it a lot to make cakes. I've got a gluten-free uh, chocolate cake that's very popular. I have a a keto almond, uh, carrot cake that's really popular. Um, I've also made, by the way, cakes from packages. I've made um, cornbread from packages. If you look up the um, apple cake uh, on the instant, uh, the Two Sleevers blog, you'll see how I use a small package of cake mix and a few sliced apples to make something that looks really, really pretty. So in that situation, what's happening is, is it really baking the cake? It's not, it's steaming the cake. Does the cake come out like moist and gummy? It's, it's kind of interesting. You know what? It's moist, but it's not gummy. And I don't know how to explain this. It, it has the texture of really light cake, but that moist environment with indirect heat um, causes it to have a very light, uh, light sort of texture and a nice crumb that comes with it. Uh, and there's a moistness to it that is, is really, really delicious. Let's talk about the types of uh, materials that do well in here. Okay, I'm straight up going to tell you my bias. Do not use glass in here. So there is a whole discussion about borosilicate versus not. Is it safe? Is it not? You know what? The fact of the matter is most of us don't know if our glass is borosilicate or not. Uh, Pyrex does no longer means heat proof glass. I've had a delicious uh, pork Szechuan soup, which is also on the blog, just absolutely break and I had glass all over everything and my whole soup was wasted. And besides, it could be dangerous. So I, I prefer not to use glass, one, because it's not safe, but the other reason is because it slows down cooking time. So I'll get, I have a uh, easiest ever shrimp curry with the coconut milk recipe. And it's a delicious recipe, but I'll get feedback from people going, oh, it took me, for, you know, my shrimp wasn't cooked. Well, size of the shrimp matters. How high up it is from the bottom is going to matter. And then the type of container you use matters. Glass is gonna take the longest. So if you make a recipe off of the two sleevers blog and you use a glass container, you're going to have to adjust for time. My preferences are actually uh, aluminum, uh, see how much how how much use this is gotten. See how grub grubby it is. It's grubby not because it's dirty, but because uh, it's uh, it was uh, aluminum that I put into the dishwasher, which you're not supposed to do. But hey, I'm a real person. I have to use a dishwasher. I hate doing dishes. Um, so I use aluminum, and then I use stainless steel. Uh, which again, aluminum and stainless steel are lightweight. They conduct heat really quickly. They retain heat really quickly. And I use silicone when I'm using baskets, etc., or when I'm using a lid. Um, so those to me are the safest things to use. So to recap, aluminum, stainless steel, and silicone do really, really, really well in, in, a, in a pressure cooker. Aluminum foil does really, really well also, and I use that a lot. And let me mention that. Many people are not wanting to run out and make a huge investment in uh, utensils to put inside here because they're not sure they're gonna use it. You know, you already have a small kitchen. Buy yourself these. 
these little aluminum uh, containers, I use these a lot. So I, this, by the way, uh, is a small mini loaf pan. It'll make a half a cup of rice really, really easily. And you can actually fit two in here. See that? You could do that. Um, the little pie pans fit. Um, so you start with these, and if you like doing pot and pot cooking, and you find you use it often enough, um, like I said, there's a link, there's a post on the blog that says, you know, the Instant Pot must have accessories. You can go look at that. Um, okay, let's talk about sizes. So this is a six quart Instant Pot. Pretty much anything you want in here is going to be about um, six to seven inches across and no more than three or four inches tall. So six, six by three, um, six by four, six by two, those kind of containers fit really, really well. If you have an Instant Pot Mini, which I do and I love, the widest one it's going to take is a five inch uh, to six inch pot. So it's not going to go seven inches at all. Uh, and you can't do anything that's more than one or two inches in a mini. This one that I have is a seven by three. You see it fits really well. There's enough place around the sides. It's great. This one that I have is about a six by one. This also fits. It doesn't hold a lot of food. I'm going to switch out for my mini and show you what happens. First issue I'm going to have is this big thing is not even going to fit in here. Anything that goes into the mini has to be under six inches. As you can see, the seven inch thing is not going to fit in here. The six inch one, however, if I had a smaller rack, which I do, um, this is going to fit just fine. Which brings me to the other point. When you put a pot in there, do not put it straight onto the bottom. You have to have a rack to elevate it. Otherwise, everything in this pot is going to scorch really, really easily. So you always need a steamer rack. I have another one that I use for the mini. This fits in here. So for the interest of, in the interest of efficiency, actually, to be honest, what I do is everything I have is six inches. Um, so I get six by one, six by two, six by three, um, and then I get a smaller trivet because not only do the six inches fit in the mini and in the uh, six quart, they also fit in my most of my air fryers. So I tend to use the same utensils for all of those, and that way I don't have to have 16 million different varieties. Four reasons why you would do it. Uh, to cook multiple items at the same time, you can do so many different varieties uh, of food at the same time. You can do it, you can, you, you can you elevate uh, something that is a delicate cooking item, just steam it, just cook it at the same time as something else. You can use it as a water bath for custards and cheesecakes, and you can use it to quote bake items. Lots of recipes on the blog, twosleepers.com for this, and I hope this was helpful for you to watch. I'm going to do another video on the accessories that you need, uh, but please watch the other videos on cooking in a pressure cooker, including uh, a video on the Maillard reaction, why you don't need to brown, and how to adapt recipes to a pressure cooker, which by the way, I have it in a three-part series. I'm going to redo that, but you can watch, uh, you can watch those videos right now. I also have another video on uh, why did I get the burn uh, signal uh, in my Instant Pot. You can watch that. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe. Thank you.